External validation is a powerful drug. I used drugs and alcohol to serve that purpose for so long. In sobriety, I've used people to serve that purpose for so long, consciously and both unconsciously. And once I come to not be in denial about what's going on, I, I really have to choose. And if I don't choose the solution of ridding myself of toxic substances, people, and other addictions, I'm harming myself and I'm not living in line with my values. And that's painful. I can only compartmentalize for so long. It's not sustainable very long. It isn't. It starts to seep into other areas of my life, including sobriety. That's why I really have to watch my ass because I will go towards what makes me feel good. I will try to get away with it. I will. And I will try to keep it. And when it doesn't make me feel good any longer, in fact, it makes me feel quite bad, I'll try to keep them. I'll try to keep it. Instead of the logical thing of piecing out, ridding myself, of whatever it may be. And that's addiction for me. Despite consequences and literal pain, staying in that cycle, that's what addiction is for me. And I found that being addicted to a person, just like drugs and alcohol, is real. It isn't the person, it's what they, what they provide and they don't provide it for very long that's validation that I seek it doesn't really last it isn't real validation and then feeling miserable and wondering why why am I miserable with this person why is this so horrible because I'm using them for a purpose whether or not I want to admit it. And, it. and it may look like love and I may believe it's love, but, the, but at the end of the day, I can't lie to myself. It's not, it's dependence, it's codependency. It's, it's external validation that isn't sustainable, right? It stopped working, it stopped working. And I think the solution is similar for all of these things. Every addiction that I have quit, the solution has been along the same lines. There's a God-shaped hole within me, and I'm trying to fill it with other stuff, right? It is a continuous battle, continuous. And when I'm off guard, and I'm not connected, and I'm not in my truth, I better, I better watch out. Shit creeps up. People creep in. Shit happens. You nope, know, I hit my head on the wall again. I fell down and then I keep doing it and wondering why does this hurt so much? Why? And I cry about it instead of solution based action. I gotta take action. No matter what addiction it is. So that's for me. And I just wanted to share that because I thought maybe it would help someone else going through something. Um, it's fascinating to look at the similarities between addiction to a person and to a substance or behavior. It's literally the same type of payoff in the brain, the behaviors, the pursuit. It's wild. Because the thing is, like I said, like it doesn't really feel good. And it's not something I really want. This person may not be anything that I really want. And in fact, the person may be someone I really don't, don't jive with, right? Like not my type of person. Not good for me. 
maybe a type of person that I used to associate with. Someone that really isn't living in alignment with, with good morals, whatever, not judging, but I have to use discernment for myself and stop pretending it's not happening. The denial is dangerous. The denial kept me stuck in my addiction to drugs and alcohol. After a while, being, being around something or someone conditions you. It conditions you to think a certain way, to believe certain things about yourself, to believe things about the world and others, to act a certain way. May not even be conscious of it. May catch on later on. May start to think things are normal that aren't, that I, that I didn't think were normal before or I wouldn't put up with. Behaviors that I don't appreciate Disrespect, disvaluing, devaluing me. And running back to this person as if they were my drug for no good reason. Just because of like a compulsion to do so. I don't know why I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it. Ripping off the band-aid is the only way for me for me so that's when the healing can begin because I cannot heal when I'm in a situation that is toxic for me totally unhealthy not giving me any kind of value actually like I said devaluing me making me feel horrible and miserable while in it who would stay around someone that they literally cry about very often when the relationship is going well that's not that's not normal but ignoring that well can't really ignore it but being in denial about it and and placing the blame on oneself oh maybe you know i just have to act different i'm just not i'm not good enough i'm not desirable i'm not lovable I'm all of these things. It's not them. And while maybe I have a huge part, because I do, and nobody's perfect, there are some people that should just not mix. They just don't. And they may be using each other without even knowing it. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. Maybe there's a purpose. But it is the same for me as drugs and alcohol. And so if you're having trouble and feeling like, you know, you can't stop with someone that's toxic, you can't get away from them. There's just something there. There's a psychological block. Maybe you're having an addiction to them. Um, I'm reading to, I'm reading a book called um, Is It Love or Is It Addiction by Brenda Schaefer. Well, Audible. And um, it's very good. It's very good. It's opening my eyes to a lot of things. When, when we're growing up, we may not know what healthy relationships are. We may not know. We may not have had them modeled for us. We may have had an abnormal or unhealthy relationship with our caregivers, our parents. And so this seeps out, it carries over rather, into other relationships in our life until hopefully we can see that, become aware of what's happening and then do the work to change it and change these patterns because I seem to be reliving the same relationships over and over, trying to solve them unconsciously, subconsciously, whatever. 
seems about right. It's like a hamster wheel, dude. It's like running and running and running. It's like, what am I doing, dude? Like, you know better. Like, you know better. And I try, I try to put the bat down and not beat myself up. You know? Shit is, shit is a hell of a drug. Validation's a hell of a drug. You know? And my friend said to me today, we are talking about addiction, as always, because that's what I do. And um, she's like, yeah, awareness is half of it. It's half the battle. I'm like, yeah, true. Yeah. I don't want to admit it, but it's true. You know? We always want to be compassionate with others and not with ourselves. At least that's how it is for me. I want to forgive others, but not myself. I want to be harsh on myself and not others. It's very self-critical. I got to stop doing that. There are times when I do it. It's not all the time. I've learned, I've learned to be aware of when it's happening. But if I want to live a happy, long life, free of disease and mental illness, in serenity, I have to do the work to keep toxicity, drugs, alcohol, people, um, things, whatever, out of my life that are not helping me get where I want to go. I've been trying to ask myself that lately, and it gets me every time. So I ask myself, is doing this behavior or making this decision going against, or is it going with where I'm trying to go, my goal, my end point in life? Where am I trying to go? Well, I'm trying to be a happy, productive, sober individual, helping others, service, living fully, no regrets, right? All these things. I wanna be a hard worker. I wanna keep my promises and my commitments. I wanna have friends. I don't wanna isolate. These are my needs and I wanna be loved. I wanna be loved by someone that's worthy of having my love too. I wanna be loved by someone that isn't just anybody. I still believe in the Prince Charming shit, okay? One day, and I'm divorced. So if I believe it, anybody can. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, even if it doesn't happen, it's fine. You know, there's family there, I have family. Um, and maybe this is too personal to put on here, but whatever, it's, it doesn't even matter. Um, You know, it's just one day at a time. <laughs> it for real is. It's one day at a time. And this journey in recovery, man, I can't even describe it. There's some bumps in the road, but there's a lot of beautiful rainbows and kitties. All right, I'll stop being cheesy, but for real, um, went back to meetings today um, on my own and when it, I did an online meeting it was really cool an international meeting people from freaking everywhere man like 100 people and it was a really good it was a really good meeting and it was a speaker meeting and the guy spoke for 20 minutes and he said some really good stuff that really resonated with me and it had been a while since I heard that so that was cool he was genuine man that was cool I needed to hear that message today. It's called back to the basics for me, baby. Back to the basics, doing my few things that I know help me. Prayer, reading, staying um, in communication with my sober supports. These things are important for me. And whenever I start feeling squirrely, I wanna isolate. And that's feeding it because isolation is literally my enemy. It's my addiction, right? Connection is the answer and the solution to addiction summed up. So 
it's all gravy, baby. Everything is a learning experience. And life is that. Life is that. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. And I am open to experiences, adventures, and going to live my life more fully. I've decided that today. That's right. Stop limiting myself because really I'm the only one holding myself back, right? I'm not trapped anywhere. I'm not in addiction anymore. I was trapped there for a long time. There's no shackles on me. You know, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. So I could cry about it, about what, I mean, I can make up anything to cry about. I, I'm like, my life's so horrible. Meanwhile, like my life is like literally amazing. I have everything that I want and need. But it doesn't matter because my, my addiction mind is still in there somewhere, right? And it tries to get me, man. I believe that. So, old Lindsay's in there. Not telling me to use, but old Lindsay, the addictive type of thinking, the gratification, the feel good. What is going to make me feel good? The absorption in self. Yeah. I have to rid myself of self, of ego. I mean, it's not poss possible to completely erase it, eradicate it, but humility is the goal, I think. When I take my ego out of shit, I feel a lot better. I'll talk about that more, but this is getting a little long for this video. So thanks for bearing with me and listening to my message. I hope, uh, I hope you guys had a wonderful day and I love you all.